Okay, third graders, now as I read the second time and I'm going to annotate the text or just kind of talk through it. Remember, our main focus is sequence of events and cause, of, cause and effect. So as I read, listen to what I'm saying and it will help guide your thinking to answer the questions on the next few slides. Okay, let's begin. Each time Clara leads a walkout, the bosses fire her. Each time she pickets, her life is in danger. Okay, I'm going to pause right here. So this word pickets means every time she walks the factories um, on the outside of the building for the strike, holding up signs, that's what it's called, picketing. The bosses hire men to beat her and the other strikers. The police arrest her 17 times. They break six of her ribs, but they can't break her spirit. It's shatterproof. So right here, her spirit. So what keeps her motivated? Why is she motivated to keep fighting even though she's getting hurt? Clara hides her bruises from her parents. A few days later, she's on the picket line again. And the other girls think, if she can do it, we can do it. For weeks, small strikes go on, but the bosses find other young women to, other, other young women to do the work for the same low pay and long hours. Okay, let's just pause here. So they use our vocab word strike. So remember, a strike is if somebody that refuses to work until they get better working conditions. So if the bosses keep firing her, they have to keep hiring other young women to do the work. But they're still keeping the other young women for the same pay in the long hours. Okay, let's continue. We must do something bigger. Think, Clara and other union leaders, something huge, a giant strike at every garment factory in the city. The union holds a meeting. Throngs of workers pack the seats, the aisles, the walls, the hall thrums with excitement. Clara listens to the speech after speech. The speakers, mostly men, want everyone to be careful. Two hours pass, no one recommends a general strike. Okay, let's just pause. General strike means like a huge strike where everyone is involved instead of just these women in these small little factories doing small strikes. Finally, the most powerful union leader in the country goes up to the podium. Not even, he proposes action. So Clara does. That's right, Clara, she calls out from the front of the halls. The crowd lifts her to the stage, where she shouts in Yiddish. I have no further patience for talk. I move that we go on a general strike. And she starts the largest walkout of women workers in U.S. history. The next morning, New York City is stunned by the sight of thousands of young women streaming from the factories. One newspaper calls it an army. Others call it a revolt. Okay, let's pause right here. So revolt. Remember, I talked about that in our vocabulary, talking about bravest and strike. Revolt means the same thing as a strike. You're getting all these people to come and fight for something that they have in common and, it, and it's fixing women's right in the workload. It's a revolt of girls. For some are only 12 years old and the rest are barely out of their teens. In the coming weeks, Clara is called a hero. She lights up chilly union halls with her fiery pep talk. Her singing lifts the spirits of the picketers when a group of thugs approaches, she yells, stand fast, girls. 
So right here, why do you think Clara is called a hero? So be thinking, why is she a hero? Could she be a hero in the boss's eyes? Or is she causing too much trouble for the bosses? Who is she a hero for and why is she a hero? And they do all winter long in the bitter cold, in their cheap thin coats, tired and starving and scared. The girls walk alongside the men on the icy sidewalks of the picket line. They spill out the union halls, blocking the roads, filling street corners and public squares. Newspapers write stories about them. College girls raise money for them. Rich women suede in fur coats, picket with the factory girls. By the time the strike is over, hundreds of bosses agree to let their staff form unions. Remember, unions are a group of people that want to stand together to make sure that the workforce um, so union is that force that makes sure that the working environment environment is safe for everybody. They shorten the work week and raise salaries. The strike emboldens thousands of women to walk out of garment factories in Philadelphia and Chicago. So remember, she started in New York City. So she's raised enough awareness about these unfair work conditions. And now people in Philadelphia and Chicago are doing the same thing. Because their work environment is not safe for all to work in. And the strike convinces Clara to keep fighting for the right of workers. Her throat is hoarse, her feet are sore, but she has helped thousands of people, providing that in America. Wrongs can be rightened, warriors can wear skirts and blouses, and the bravest hearts may beat in girls only five feet tall. Okay, so that ends our story and me annotating a little bit. So I just want to recap our sequence of events. Remember, Clara first arrives in New York City from the ship. She's hired as a garment worker and she finds out that it's really, really tough and hard and just horrible. Then Clara starts to rally up the girls to start the strike because this unfair work environment. Once she does that, some of the major events is that she stands up and she has all these women strike. And then in other states, they start to do the same. So that's kind of the sequence of events. Now, what was the cause and the effect of Clara wanting to strike? So the cause is why it is happening. So number one, the cause is because of the unfair work environment that Claire is working and all the other girls are working in. So that's their cause. The effect of it is that they start to go on strike to make sure um, that they get the work environment fair and safe for all. So that's kind of the cause and effect. So now I wanna hear your thoughts on the sequence of events and your thoughts on the cause and effect. I kinda gave you clues. So good luck, and I cannot wait to see your work.